In this video, I'm going to show you a few examples of using transactions on an actual database. And I'm going to use a table that's very similar to the one in the previous video, the one that had bank accounts in it. So let's look to see what's inside that table first. Select star from account. And we can see I've got six accounts in there with various balances. And I want to show you what the schema for that table looks like. Here it is. So we've got an account number, which is numeric. I threw the name in there just to make it easier to talk about the various accounts, and there's a balance. And I've also got a constraint on a balance that prevents, it, prevents the balance from going below zero. So let's do the first example that I had uh, in, the, in the video, which I want to transfer $50 from Sue's account into Bob's account. Sue's account is account number 100, and Bob is 110. So I would do that with an update. Oh, since I'm going to be doing two updates, I want to combine these into a transaction. So I'll start the transaction with begin. And I get a confirmation from the database system that says the transaction has now begun. Other than that word begin, there's no other visual confirmation that it's going on. So you just need to keep track in your head about whether a transaction is underway or not. Next, I'll do an update. Update account set balance equals balance minus 50, where account number is 100. So this will take $50 out of account number 100. And then I'll do another account uh, update, and I'll just edit the previous one, which is to add $50 to account number 110. And then I can visually confirm that they work by doing a select. So let's just bring that up here. And I can see that, in fact, $50 has now come out of Sue's and has been transferred into Bob's. So I think that looks good. So we'll do a commit, and now the data has been saved. In fact, if I do the select again, I'll see that nothing has changed. So I began a transaction with begin, I did two updates, and then I did a commit when I confirmed that everything looked good. Uh, let's try another one. Let's, um, let's say it's the end of the month, and like a typical bank, they, they, in, they have some fees that they apply at the end of the month. So maybe these fees only apply to accounts that have less than $200 in it. So I, what I want to do is I want to deduct $5 from every account that has less than $200 in it. So that would be an update as well. So I would do update account set balance equals balance minus 5. And, um, uh, and then I need to restrict it to the ones with less than 200. So I'll go where balance is less than 200. Now let's say um, I accidentally typed 2,000 when I meant to do 200. If this was not in a transaction, it would then go and update everyone's balances, and I'd have messed up. So um, I don't want to do that. So I want to, in fact, begin a transaction first. So let's er erase that. There we go. And we'll go begin. And now I'll do the same update. So update uh, account set balance equals balance minus 5, where uh, balance is less than 2,000. Again, I'll make that same mistake I did before. And it says, oh my gosh, I've just updated all of them. I didn't update just the two that I was expecting. So if I do that uh, select, I can see, oh my gosh, I have deducted uh, $5 from everyone's account. Now I want to undo what I just did. So I'll do a rollback. And we can see that everything's now been restored to what it was before. And then what I can do is uh, fix my mistake. So I'll begin a transaction again go back and do the same update, but change the 2,000 to 200. And this looks better, so it's only updated two of the rows. I can look and see that, that yes, in fact, uh, the, the, the accounts that had more than $200 have not been affected. And now I can do a commit. And everything has been saved. So that's one use of the transaction there, is so that you get the ability to undo something where you made a mistake. Um, let's, let's try another one here. I want to now do a transfer again. I want to transfer now $150 out of account number 120, which is Daphne's account, and I want to put that into account uh, number 115, so that's Corey's account. So I want to take $150 from Daphne and give it to Corey. So we'll begin a transaction, and then we'll do an update. Update account set balance equals balance minus, what did I say, $150, where account number is equal to 120. Okay, so that should be taking $150 from Daphne. And we see that a, a check constraint has been violated. But let's go ahead and let's, let's try to do the other one anyway. So I want to add $150 to 
account number 115. Okay, and we get an error message that says current transaction is aborted, commands ignored until end of transaction block. So at this point, the database sees that there's been an error, so anything we do from this point forward is completely useless. Uh, there, we have no choice at this point but to roll back the transaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to do roll back. And we get a confirmation that things have been rolled back. And then if we do a select again, we see that everything's been put back the way it was. These were the balances that were there before we did any updates. Let me try that transaction again. So let's do a begin. Let's take away 150 from Daphne. So again, so this is not going to work. So we get that same error we did before. And uh, let's try to add the 150 to Corey's account. We know that's going to fail. So in fact, any, like I said, anything we do at this point is not going to work. If I even try to do a select star from account, it's going to say, can't do it. And if I try to do a commit at this point, it's going to do a rollback. So, so that's kind of strange. So um, once it gets an error, you have no choice but to do a rollback. It, the database will not let you do a commit at that point. You have to do a rollback. Um, so, so I wanted to show you here that in a transaction, once there's an error, y you have no choice but to do a rollback. And it's actually kind of a, a, a good technique. I'll show you maybe in, the, in, in either the next video or the video after that how you could use that technique to your advantage. Uh, let's do one more here. I just want to show you the power of transactions and the ability to do an, un an undo. You can do anything you want inside a transaction, and you can always undo it. So let's begin a transaction here, and then let's just go wild here. So let's drop table account. Um, I know I got another table here called state, so let's drop that. Um, let's drop get another table. What do I got? I've got one called a book author. I can drop that. Um, so those tables are gone, and all the data that's in it is just absolutely gone. If I try to do a select star from account, you can see uh, the table doesn't exist, so it's just, it's just gone. But if I do a rollback, and then I do that select again, you can see it's back. So anything you do inside of a transaction can be undone just by doing a rollback. You can, in fact, delete all the tables in, in your database and just roll it back, and they all, they all come right back. Um, this also applies to creating things. I can create tables, I can insert into tables, I can change things, and if I decide at any point that I want to undo all the stuff that I just did since I typed in begin, I just type rollback and it's all just undone. So that, that's the basics of transactions for you. I showed you how to begin a transaction, how to roll it back, and how to commit. In the next couple of videos, I'll show you some other techniques you can use um, to take advantage of that. And also, uh, I'll talk about some of the odd things that happen, like what happens if two transactions are overlapping. So if two users start a transaction, and they both want to access the same table at the same time. What happens in that case? Um, so we need to talk about something called ACID first. So go to the next video and we'll talk about ACID.